Hello and welcome to Infinity. I've been asked a number of times about workflow, uh, which is simply the order of play of what you do when and next and so on. Uh, and the first thing to say about it, this is highly variable subject. Everybody got their own way of doing this. So I'm going to show you something of, of what I do. Um, and please don't say take it as being this is what you should do or definitively but take it as an idea that maybe this is something that you can think about and so on we'll do a bit of an example as we go through but we're not going to take absolutely ages over that so let's start off then here are the overall stages i tend to use start off in raw because i take raw images uh and i do some playing around in that uh then overall shaping of uh, of the uh the thing composing tidying tone color detail and output it's something like this so we're going to go through and do it and then switch back and forth to see this so here we go we are first of all in here which is raw and in fact let's have a look at what we say here so first of all there's a bit about recovering so recovering detail that's maybe outside the histogram for example a bit of balancing out of colors and things like that and then look at the lens stuff uh, and that's what i'm going to quickly do here so recovering always look at the histogram here in this instance it doesn't look like it's fallen out a bit here but i use things these things up here uh, to highlight uh, and they will show up in red yellow and blue where it's uh, if it's gone out so for example in the basic thing here if i headed down to here for example there we go see all that that coloring there uh, double click back to the beginning that just shows you where it's gone off the plot and i can recover from that otherwise i will just go down here and i'll look at the picture and i'll say okay within here uh, i'm looking at the light and dark and so on it looks like i've got space here but actually there may well be a bit in here with the colors so i'll typically if I need to go down to shadows and highlights, not you know, necessarily, but looking in here, see this area, I could get more detail out of that. So I'm going to turn the shadows up a little bit to get just some more in there. And I'm going to compensate back the other way in a bit, but just to get some detail in that. And I'm going to pull the highlights again down a little bit so that I'm not going to burn things out when I tweak things in other ways. Then I go up and look here a bit. Does the exposure need changing? I don't think so, but I'll just push the black point up a bit and the brightness up a bit, and this is effectively pushing the contrast. Then go to the lens tab and say, do I need to change things? Well, I've got a sloping horizon here. That's not good. And so the first thing do is going to affect that. Um, I could use the crop tool here. I tend to leave that to later. In fact, I could use this, do this whole thing in photo, which I often will, but here it can be easier so i'm going to hit control and single quote to bring up the grid then i'll rotate just to flatten off that horizon there so i'm using the grid there to to do that then i'm going to look at things here see that i've got this perspective things tilting in a bit here so that's kind of in the vertical direction so i'm going to play with the vertical thing see if i can straighten everything up from here so i'll often do this in the photo persona because you it's easier to kind of recover stuff you lose this things here off the edges of the screen but that's kind of about it so i'm going to keep that from there and then just go straight to develop now what's next from here is shaping that shaping again you can do it in photo you can do it in the develop uh, and some of the straightened things here I will often look at, in here at the perspective and warp tools here, which are down here. There's the perspective tool and there's the mesh warp, which lets you really push and pull and shape things about the, to, to straighten things out or change the aspects or whatever of it. But I've mostly done that here, I think. That seems pretty good, so I don't need to do any more of that. So I can hit Control single quote to turn off the grid. Now what's next? And I'm going to get to, yeah, composing. This is a look at the, the overall thing. I think, what am I want the picture to show? So in here, I might say, well, there's a lot of sky. I don't need all that sky there. 
Maybe I could say take something off here. This side, this is a bit of a nuisance here. This because it's a distraction. I can darken it down, but if I can just crop past that, I'll also cut off that tree to save having to clone that out. And this side, hmm, it'd be nice to take this diagonal down here. I want to keep some of the seed, but I don't need all of it. So I'll hit the crop tool. And I'll often do this one at a time. So I'll bring the sky down to yeah, something like that, something above the trees here with a little bit of space. I'll bring the bottom up here a bit. I may need to change that. But, but if I bring that up, I'll, I, I can put that on the thirds. I'm not a desperate about thirds, but yeah, maybe will this in case. I'm going to bring in this side here. So I leave those boats in and this comes down to the corner here. I quite like doing that. And this side, I want to get rid of that. So I'll bring this in to just past it there. Now look at the overall picture. Is that OK? I could change things if I want to. It's a little bit of a wide screen, but that's OK. So there's that one there. So what's next? Now there's a bit of tidying up. Um, look for things like defringing, like any spots and erasing to, to do this. Defringing, you sort of roll into areas like this and you can see, ah, oh, I've got a bit of a defringe there. There is a live uh, def defringe, but I, I prefer to use this one. I have problems with that. So I go up here to filters, colors, and where is it? Um, defringe. There you go. And here he's got the picker in it. You can do this in develop, but they haven't got this picker, which is quite useful. So I click on that and that automatically finds the color. Then I'll bring down the threshold and there you are. Pink. There it goes. I can play around with the radius as well. Just I go take that down. I'll come up until it's just enough to take that out. And tolerance again. Do it just so it's enough to, to knock the thing out and apply that. Then I'm going to look up here, zoom out again. And look if there's anywhere else. Uh, brown white things is quite typical. So I'll zoom into that one there and look, I've got some of the red down there. I've nicely displayed there, so it's good to fix. So I go filters. Colors, defringe, and I'll just click on that and see that'll select the right color there. And the same thing, I can bring this down to to reduce that. Bring the radius down and up until it's fixed. Then tolerance down and up until that's about fixed. I can look around everywhere else, but you get the idea from that. All right. Now then, what else? Um, it was oh yeah, spots in erasing. To look for sort of dust spots and things like that, I will typically go to Live Filters and Unsharp just temporarily and just whack the radius and the factor right up. And that will show me where there are some spots coming up here. So making sure I've got this whole thing selected, I go to the In Painting brush here, for example, and just tap over spots. And if there's a whole area that's looking pretty crappy, I might try painting over it and see how affinity is going to, you know, kind of have a go at fixing that. If it doesn't work well, I can just undo it. Yeah, it's not great, but if, by the time you turn it down again, because if I turn the, take this one off, you can't see it. So this, that will just let you get the real things. Then there's things you might just want to delete, which are a bit of a nuisance. So things like, there's a white thing there, I think a little bit of a structure. I'm going to take that off, but I'll leave other stones and so on. You could go around and see there's a bit there just going off. I'll take that out there. So I don't like things falling off the screen too much. So there we go. And also erasing. If there's anything you just want to completely erase, like I wanted to take the person out there, but I'll leave them in. Right. What's next? Tone. Yes, this is where you start to get really serious. This this is, is in particular, this, this is global tone, which is the the blacks and whites. Um, something I might do, there's a number of controls you can use for this, but just as an example here, I'll go to curves. And uh, if I go here and let's say, um, I will, what I'll often do here, I'll go to LAB and then the master and lightness. So I'm just controlling the lightness of it. So in other words, the monochrome elements. And I can bring that in a bit there, but this detail in there, I might bring a little bit in, but I don't know that then do a little bit of a an s curve often this you, you can go too far very very easily with this so just a little bit of contrast because that contrast is a big thing 
steepening the curve anywhere will increase the contrast. There you go, that's good. Now we tap back on there so the controls go in the right place. So again, I can spend a lot more time. This is global tone. I can also work on local tone, which I'll do, do it later. So thinking about it, what is my plan for this? Might change the brightness and contrast separately, um, which you can do with curves. You can do with the brightness and contrast control. So what's next is color. Um, color here, we're looking at color balance, maybe white balance. Um, then look at things like saturation overall and, and, and vibrance and hue of those things. So let's go back over here. And what I can do here, for example, is if I go to, um, uh, where is it? Uh, it's not white balance, it's color balance. There it is. Um, now I've got controls here and I can do this with um, note between the shadows, midtones and highlights. So shadows, for example, I might add a little bit of um, blue or, or teal into it. So if I turn up the blue a bit and turn in the cyan a little bit, the shadows will just get that little bit of a, a color in it and then go to highlights and do the opposite. So bring the red up a little bit and into the bit of yellow and that'll add some warmth into the highlights. Uh, Mid-tones, you can just look to compensate a little bit. What's this? The greens are green, a bit too green now. I can go down into magenta to reduce that green, for example. Okay, that'll do. Now, what else have I got here? I could say do lots of other colour things. I could play with, with, with the tones here. I could maybe this probably needs a little bit of desaturation. So I can go to HSL, for example, and just turn the saturation down a little bit so it's not kind of you know looking unrealistic that'll do with that now then the next thing is uh i could you know rehear that line detail detail here um this is where the sharpening and things like that might be done um we look at zones so oh, this is going to be you know whole areas where, where you want the areas the surfaces of things this is where you look for texture or like large areas which are of detail and you might do some tonal contrast in that and edges um, from which you know can be blurring can be sharpening of those uh, and i won't go into much detail about this because in this you're going to spend quite a bit of time this is where i spend most of my time is looking into the detail uh, of things, the little areas and saying maybe I need a bit more brightness in there and so on. And that is just takes so much time that I, I'm not going to do it here because this video will be twice as long, maybe three times. But that's where you're going to go. So here I might brighten up this a little bit here. Um, yeah, I might look at the green areas there. I might select the greens and, and play with the, the colouring and tone here. I might bring up this person a little bit and all that kind of stuff. And then finally, where are we? It's the output. And then output, when you're outputting it, you can sharpen here again, because um, you can have the, the basic sharpening, which you do earlier, but also do output sharpening. And the output sharpening depends upon the format. Sharpening for printing is going to be very different from sharpening for the web and you just play with that resizing will affect things so you could if, you know again if you're going to put it on the web you don't need super detail but if you're going to print it you need to be very very careful with it and particularly if you can print it bigger than it actually is and then the formatting if you're going to save it whether you save it as um, i will often save things as jpegs if i'm just going to share them and, and show them elsewhere if i want to keep the super detail maybe i'll use tiff if I'm going to re-edit it, I can save it as a, an AF photo or even a PSD. I'm going to share it with my friends who use, uh, excuse me, Photoshop. Right. And that's it. Overall, that's my overall workflow. And you can see the kind of things that you get to do with this. A quick before and after from just so far from the original up to this one here. Done quickly. I'd spend a lot more on this. And in the end, Use whatever workflow you like, but try and figure out ways to do it. That's it. Sorry about this being a little bit long, but I'm trying to help explain it all. Okay. Thank you very much for watching.